Hey everybody, welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays. Zero Stars Fire Rights News. I'm Rafe. Right. Animal Rights. It's been a while. Animal Rights News and gossip packed into a short, sweet three minutes on everyone's favorite day. It's a Thursday and it is like uh, th like six weeks late on this video. But that's how things go. You know what I mean? I'm a little late. I'm sorry. Holy crap, I can't believe it's been like six weeks since my last video. Holy moly. Honestly, the shorts are much easier to make and I've been putting those out and YouTube seems to like them, but I do like the deeper dives of like a longer YouTube video so we can talk and discuss and debate and be angry with one another comment in the comments, but yeah, whatever. I recently went to visit Positive Beginnings in Florida and hung out with foxes rescued from fur farms. That was pretty amazing. And of course, I had to do an interview with Nicole, the founder, about the program and what it's all about, so keep an eye out for that soon. We're also voting on uh, where we're gonna send a couple thousand dollars uh, this month over on my Patreon. You can join for a couple bucks and vote with us, or you can now join on Instagram. Just join my subscription over there, and I'll dump 100% of the money on top of the Patreon donation before sending it off to an animal sanctuary. So let's give away a bunch of money. If you wanna be a part of it, please join us. Okay, so Joey Carpstrom put out a new documentary, and I watched it so you don't have to, as I often do. But maybe you do wanna watch it, in that case you should. But to be honest, I feel like this would be uh, much more interesting of a movie to activists than to the general public, but I'll, I'll dive into that later. I rented it for 99 cents on Amazon in the US, putting it right into Joey's pockets. You're welcome. I, of course, have feelings, as I tend to do about these things, so here are my takeaways from the movie. First off, I actually didn't sit and watch the movie start to finish, so there's that. I recently celebrated my 29th year of being a vegan and an animal activist, and I think I can safely say at this point that I'm in it to win it. Like, I don't particularly need to see awful footage over and over again to help me with my journey. I tend to skip forward through most of these pieces. So I talked about this a few months back and more realistically, you probably heard this from Joey himself because he has a much larger following than I do, but he did an undercover investigation into the pig slaughterhouse Pilgrim's Pride in Manchester, UK. And he managed to get the first UK footage of pigs being gassed and killed using CO2. Prior to that, the fine folks over at the Farm Transparency Project in Australia had done something similar. But the main chunk of the documentary is about how they pulled off the investigation. Joey teams up with Dan Shepard, who you may know as the grumpy vegan granddad, who goes undercover into the facility. And big ups to him, I've enjoyed his YouTube channel. Um, and so it was cool to see him in action in this documentary and putting his money where his mouth is. And, and the same can be said about Joey. Like regardless of how you or I may feel about him, after seeing the documentary, you get a real glimpse of what he risked um, to get the footage. And it's no small or safe task, and I'll certainly give credit where credit is due. You may have seen my take on like the spiracy movies. First off, y'all need to come up with a new name. Honestly, Cow Spiracy, Sea Spiracy, Christ Spiracy. There's a new movie apparently called Tree Spiracy. We get it, Kip, you're like a good conspiracy. But the thing that drives me crazy about those movies is that they all imply that they're putting their lives on the line for making those documentaries. Your head's on a chopping block. They're gonna come after you. think there should be any concern of us making this documentary? Mary. Of course. Would you say there's any safety concerns for me making this film? Is there any threat or danger making a film like this? Yeah, you just wait and see. People are gonna kill you, Kip, for making this movie, and honestly, it all feels a bit ridiculous to me after a while. But when you watch Pignorant, you can see these folks actually legitimately risking themselves to get the footage. And as an activist, the piece about the actual investigation is a good watch, like it's harrowing. And again, like big respect to Dan and to Joey, but this is a bit of where my criticism begins. It's a good watch, you know, for, activists. Yeah, there are interviews uh, with experts about pigs and pig behavior. There's footage of pigs uh, in bad conditions and also but good conditions. They talk about pig rescue. There are attempts at gotcha interviews with industry and welfare people asking them how to humanely kill a pig. There are less aggressive street interviews than what Joey usually puts out. But to sit down for an hour and 40 minute documentary where a big chunk of it is about how the investigation was done, interspersed with graphic slaughterhouse and farm footage, I'm not sure that keeps the general public in the seats. But maybe it does, I, I'm certainly no filmmaker, I'm not an expert here. But here's the thing that really bugs me about this film. And it's actually not specifically about the film at all. It's actually about the problem with like 90, 95% of these vegan or activist documentaries. But Pignorant is probably one of the most glaring examples of uh, why I get so irritated. There's loads of animal rights documentaries, this one included, that focus on the problem 
and those creating the problem. The industries, the corporations, the people running those corporations. But the answer to the problem is always the same. You just change your lifestyle and that problem and all of this and everything else, it'll just all end. And my question always is, is that working? And I would suggest the data says no. And yes, I've seen the numbers that there have been a rise in veganism in the UK, hovering around 4% where it has been hovering for a few years now, which is great. Like, that's awesome. And we can go into whether or not doing a how many vegans are there survey during Veganuary when people notoriously go kind of sort of vegan for a month and then stop. We can debate whether that's an accurate reflection on whether or not there actually are 4% ethical lifelong vegans living in the UK or if it's just a byproduct of the month. Either way, 4% is great. But as always, I think our success lies less in how many vegans there are, but rather how many animals are killed each year. Because we can have all the vegans we want, but if more and more animals are being killed, it's kind of a fail. Because when you factor in things like government subsidies to prop up these, uh, these industries or the decline in plant-based meat sales in the UK last year or, and exports of dead animals, what we're seeing is actually a rise in the number of cows, chickens, and yes, pigs that are killed in the UK. So my question remains, if the answer to the question of what can we do about the awful things I saw in this documentary is, well, you change your lifestyle. You stop buying these products and these issues will disappear. Is that us actually being truthful? And more importantly, is that us being strategic? If the numbers and subsidies and exports currently suggest that in the UK and just about every other country with a vegan population higher than one or two percent, that in fact the slightly rising number of vegans isn't actually helping reduce the number of animals being killed, why do we insist at the end of every animal rights documentary that this is the way forward? It's something we can ask people to do and maybe, hopefully, they'll do it. And maybe some will for, for some period of time. But there's actually no real way to determine if this is actually happening on a scale that we need it to in order to see change. So yes, here comes the inevitable question. What should we be doing? I hear that a lot. Well, it's interesting because Joey actually illustrates actually what does work to end this, but he doesn't reveal it until the 99th minute of a 102 minute film. Correct. He mentions it uh, during the end credits that he essentially did a pressure campaign against Pilgrim's Bride. He did an undercover investigation. He utilized the media to create a big story. He educated people. He protested. And guess what the outcome was? Pilgrim's Pride shut down the slaughterhouse. So what drives me crazy about this documentary? It's a perfect example of what's wrong with animal rights documentaries. Here's documented horrifying animal use. What you see will anger you and you'll want to do something about it, there's a proven way we can end this animal use piece by piece, but instead, I'm gonna suggest you do something simply because it's easy, although it really hasn't been shown to be helpful. And not just in animal issues, but any social justice movement ever. So why do documentaries do this? Probably for the same reason that animal activists rely on vegan outreach as a standalone strategy. It's easy, it's an easy ask. It's easy to do, it's easy to suggest, but is it effective to suggest that a simple change in your lifestyle will topple a trillion dollar industry? The answer is no. Education is vitally important, but it's a tactic. It's not a strategy. We need to use it as a piece of a strategy to get us to the end. Using a wide range of tactics, including education, to specifically target a place or a practice or an industry to end it and then continue to push them all down like dominoes is how social change is made. And you don't have to take my word for it. You could look at any movement that has achieved any of their goals have all done it that way. And interestingly enough, despite probably not being the intended goal, if you pay close attention to Pignorant all the way through the end credits, you'll realize this is true. And for that reason, great documentary, Joey. Keep fighting.